Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing our Shang-Chi spoiler review. So if you have not seen the movie yet, please go see it. I think me and Matt can agree on this. It is a fantastic film. I, I, should we just put that out of the way right now? We really enjoyed the film. If you didn't know, uh, we saw it early, like two weeks ago, right? Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been quite two a while. Weeks. It's been a while since we <laughs> saw it, so it's been hard not to talk about it and just, you know, spoil everything to the world. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to see our pure out of theater reactions to that, uh, you can click the i card right up there and go watch the video. Uh, I'd appreciate it. But I guess, say, hey, do you want to just get into this? Because there's, it's just all spoilers. So, like I said, you have not seen the movie. Get, get out of here. Go see it. Go see the movie. Like, what, what are you still doing here? Pause this video. Go see it. Come back. Hit play. That's all I'm asking. See you in a minute. You got this. So, Matt, what was your, like, favorite thing about the film? Cool. There was a lot I liked about it. One, I think it's so unique from any other movie in the MCU. It's something that we didn't see, we haven't seen. And that's one thing I really like is it felt so different from any other movie where it's just like its own thing. And it was nice. That was just a nice thing about it. I loved Shang-Chi's and Katie's relationship because they are my new favorite Marvel duo because they are great on screen together. Their chemistry, their dynamic, all of it just played well. The comedy, just, their comedy just hit for me overall i mean just the way they took over scenes was fantastic and i think throughout the movie you did see that friendship on screen it was just great to see to me they these two actors really sell it that they are actually best friends i love the scenes of just them hanging out with their friends at the bar and just just getting along like telling stories of like oh yeah no we're doing well when really they're just working at a, like a hotel driving cars like I gotta say, that introductory scene of just seeing them together at the hotel and being like, yeah, let's go race this car around. And it's specifically, like, Katie does it. Katie's like, yeah, no, we're gonna take this car for a spin. And it's just like, oh, that's just how they are. They're just, they're just fun thrill seekers, and that's just what they do. Yeah, and I think oh. Simu as Shang-Chi was an excellent choice i mean he really embodied that character going in i didn't know anything about who he was as an actor i haven't seen his work in the past and he blew me away i think he's just going to be a great addition to the avengers to the mcu going forward and just the way he captured chung shang chi was just great overall yeah i think i think for me he's one of my favorite actors in the mcu now like to me he is an avenger after this movie. I want to see him next to Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, uh, not Black Panther, but uh, Captain Marvel. You know, I want to see him in that lineup. This movie really made me more excited to see him in future projects, which hopefully soon. I don't want to have to wait too long. And like, you know, obviously with the end credit scene, which we'll get to in a little bit. But just knowing that we're going to see more of Shang and Katie makes me excited like we're gonna see more aquafina because it's just like yeah like um but yeah i think you're right though with the duos like i think they're the best duo next to like rocket and group maybe because i mean thinking is there any really like big duos other than like rocket group um shang and katie maybe like dr strange and wong like yeah but i mean but it's just different it's just totally. a different dynamic. Yeah. But it's so much fun. I love it. What did you think of the dad? And like that whole like backstory. I like the dad as the antagonist of this film. Um, just his backstory and you know how he's been living for thousands of years. How the rings have been keeping him basically immortal. Um, I really enjoyed all that. I think um, the finale with him, you know. It was good. It would his send off was really good. I think the way that we see him interact with his kids, it just it hurt to watch at times because you know like the past and what happened between them. But I think him as like an actor and everything played the character very well. To me, he wasn't the villain of the movie. He was the antagonist. Because mm -hmm. like he didn't really play a villainous role. Because at you know, at points he's with the crew. And he's like, okay, we need to go save your mom. 
which I think that was ins- I didn't see that coming. Like that whole no. second plot that they hid from like all the trailers that I was talking about in our review. Check it out again. <laughs> but yeah, I I di- I didn't see that coming, and I liked how they introduced like oh no, it's like these demon soul suckers that are hidden behind this wall, and the rings are making him go insane because they were like they're like somehow connected to them, mm-hmm. and. I don't know, just seeing the immer- the emotional journey for his character throughout the film really pulled at my heartstrings at times, especially during the finale. We we don't have many good villains in the MCU, but like Thanos, I I even say the Mandarin now. I think he's a really good antagonist for our heroes. I mean, sadly, he's gone, but. I, I liked what we saw of him in this movie. I liked everything mm-hmm. that they did with him. Because, I don't know, you just see the emotional struggle. And, like, he was like, okay, cool. I'm I'm this dude. But I I have a family now I need to settle. I need to take care of my kids and my wife. And he tries to leave that past behind. But then the past haunts him and kills mm-hmm. his wife. And it's just like, oh oh he's just like okay well time to get back into it and drop everything okay son you're gonna become a like a trained murderer and you're gonna go find this clan and kill them to avenge your mom and like i don't know i i thought that was crazy too it's like shang was like 14 when he left his when he left his like sister behind which oh that was fucked up like it was he, he just left his sister like his like 10 year old sister back at this like base to be trained to be a killer where they they weren't even training her like she was training herself which i i mm-hmm. thought that was cool yeah i i like that whole family dynamic and the story of family in this mm-hmm. which yeah. weirdly was also in black widow like disney has really been touching on like this family like story point I don't know. I, I I like it though. The rings. Let's yeah, talk about, about the rings really quick. Because going into this movie, I was like, how are they going to utilize the rings? Because I'm not a comic book guy. I don't know how they work in the comics. So going into this movie, I was like, so how are they going to be used? I thought they were used very well. Um, we see them used in different ways by both the dad and Shang Chi. The dad uses them as more of like a power tool. Um, very just heavy on them. Very much utilizes them and the way of power and strength um, to get what he wants. Well, Shang-Chi, he uses them more with grace, with elegance. He treats them more as a second part of himself, I would say, um, rather than just a weapon of just murder or destruction, which I just think they used them very well, and I'm satisfied with that. And it's so crazy because, you know, it works with their characters because the dad has always, he has a very aggressive style of fighting. Which then, when Shang was going throughout the movie, his whole thing was to, how do I beat my dad? Okay, I know his aggressive fighting style, but my mom beat my dad. And she had the more defensive and, like, kind of used everything to fight him. And I like that they play that into the rings at the end. Like, where he goes for, um... I mean, you can see it where, like, he makes the orb with the rings. He's about to shoot, and he just goes, like, bah, and just drops it. Because he just, he uses it differently. And then, you know, the dad has it on his arm, like, bands. But, dude, the the scene where Sean gets the rings, and they're just floating around him. That was awesome. It's, it's that was freaking, badass. That was it was really so awesome. badass. And, like, seeing how they changed color, too, from, like, that blue aura to, like, the yellow energy. Mm -hmm. That's fucking cool. It was really cool. (laughs) It was really cool. And, like, seeing when, like, he does, like, the kick and, like, instead of it, like, being on his leg to, like, brace his leg, it's, like, under his leg and, like, adds to the kick instead of being the kick, right? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, don't know, I really like that. Like, they they spend the whole movie being like, yeah, Shang-Chi is trying to get to this type of fighting style. And then they incorporate it in with, like, how he uses the rings and everything. 
I just want to see more action with those rings. Like, think of them taking down, like, Doctor Doom, and he's using the freaking rings, like... That'd be awesome. It's so cool, because it adds to, like, the, the kung fu-ness of his fighting style. Like, it gives it that flair, and, like, it makes him a superhero, too, you know? Yeah, and I love the action in this movie. I mean, it was really well choreographed. I mean, every fight scene, it felt intense. It felt motivated. It was just all, I love the fights. I mean, sometimes in the Marvel movies, there are still fights. Where it's just like, okay, can we get this over with? These fights were engaging. I was just like, you know, what's going to happen next? Who's going to win? Uh, mostly that bus scene. I think that one was the standout fight scene for me because it just kept going and it, I just kept getting more involved and just more engaged with it. Um, and, and overall, I mean, the action in this movie was great. Yeah, I like I like the bus scene too, just because we get into the movie quick. You know, mm -hmm. like most of these movies, they, they take a while to set up to like where we're going to go. But dude, just like, I feel like we're like 15 minutes into the movie and it's like, boom, we're already in a fight scene. Here we go. It's on the bus. I love the bus scene so much. Totally agree with you. But dude, that final fight, the final fight was pretty freaking cool. It was. Like him versus his dad. And then the freaking giant demon soul sucking monster coming out, and they have to fight that. Like, my favorite part of that final fight was where he was falling from the sky and like mm. manipulating the rings inside the dragon and just like killing it. Mm -hmm. It's freaking. I. It's just. I don't even know how to put it into words. It was just amazing. Oh, it was great. It was great. No, I, I think that's all great. Can we talk about the CGI for a second? Okay. The CGI in this movie, the visual effects. So, see, sometimes with Marvel, you get these type of effects where it's just, like, not polished. It just looks like PS2 graphics. And sometimes that's what we got in this movie. Sometimes um, the, the trees. graphics. The trees. The um, trees. The bus coming down the hill. A lot of it just didn't look good. You know what's funny, though? The bus coming down the hill was real. Well, that looked like shit. I don't know <laughs> why. But the the visual effects in this movie at times were a miss. But at times were pretty good. The water, when mm -hmm. um, they opened like, that little uh, dragon thing where they put the two shards or whatever you want to yeah, call them. That was um, really the, cool. That was really cool. I thought that looked very good. But then you go back to the trees. I'm just like, oh, the trees. And that's just... like the first that's like one of the first things of cgi we see in this film too mm -hmm. like oh we're driving through the bamboo oh no it's about to crush us oh there goes the car into ps2 graphics trees at the bottom of the pit but then like yeah, the just... cgi on that little fluff ball thing was amazing it's pretty good i just i don't I... know it's just i, don't I understand know. that sometimes you have to prioritize different things it just you go from like Endgame and Fandy War, where it's like top tier of Marvel CGI, where and then you go to this. And it's just like, yeah, it's not as good. But I mean, that happens with some movies, you know? Exactly. I think we're just nitpicking on that, but definitely. The, but the thing is, it just it just happens like I just noticed it like twice. Like definitely the trees at the beginning, and then I forget what the second part was. For me, it wasn't the bus, but there's a. I, I, you know, it's when they're driving through the bamboo and like trying to get through and it's like opening the paths, but mm -hmm. only from the top shot. I don't know why the trees from the top just didn't look good to me. Yeah, Something about just... it looks so fake. I don't know why. Yeah, it just, I mean, CGI is tricky. You know, you're never going to be able to really capture a real yeah. object, but it just, I don't know. I wanted a little bit more from it, but we got what we got. I mean, it doesn't affect the story, doesn't affect the movie overall too badly. So, I mean, it's just a nitpick. Exactly. But c can we go back to that little fluff ball thing for a second? Oh, God. Dude. So it's the part where they're put into the prison cell at the Mandarin's like headquarters. And I remember we're sitting there and we heard this dude coughing like somewhere in the in the prison. And we're um, in. I swear we looked at each other like, who is that? 
and I'm just, I looked at you, I'm like, I know who it is. I know who it is. Freaking Ben Kingsley over here from Iron Man 3 props up as Trevor. Just, you know, he's been, he's been chilling over there forever. Being held captive as like a little actor, you know, doing his thing. And he has a little, little fluff ball. What was its name? I was going to say Trevor, but that's his name. No, what was it? Milt, was it Milton? Milton. I think it was. Milton. I think Maybe it was not. Milton. I think uh, it was, though. Watch, it's not going to be. But, dude, I love just seeing him again. And I didn't realize he was going to be in that much of the movie. Oh, he was in a good amount of it. I was just like, oh, I'm okay with it. I mean, he adds a bit of comedy to the movie, which mm-hmm. worked for me. He was pretty funny. Um, and it was just a pleasant surprise overall for me. Yeah, and somehow he can communicate with Milton, even though Milton doesn't speak words. No, I, I don't know how, but he does. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, left here, right here, keep going straight, stay in the middle, keep going. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I like, I, I'm so glad he survived, because I hope we see more of it. I know we probably won't. Hey, but it, we might. We might. But I got it was just it was such a pleasant surprise to see him because I had a feeling he might be in it mm-hmm. because of that one shot that we saw years ago where mm-hmm. like he was broken out of prison by the actual Mandarin. But yeah, dude, it was it was just it was so good to see him again and just see where his character's gone. And it just, you know, it just ties it right back into the MCU. Just like, oh, yeah, it's a standalone thing. But just just to let you know, yeah, no, Iron Man's still hooked into this. Like, Somewhere. everything that's happened before is in this world. And they, they bring up the blip and everything, you know. And, um, I, I, I gotta say, I do like that it takes place after Endgame. Because I know while we were talking for a bit, I thought maybe it would take place between Infinity War and Endgame and, like, the blip era. Mm-hmm. But no, I kind of like that we're moving forward. We're not going back anymore. We're just moving forward with the MCU and like what we're gonna do. Keep doing it. I don't want to go back. I don't need any more prequels. <laughs> Give us more stuff in the future. But um, yeah, no, I thought that was great. And speaking of tying stuff into the MCU, uh, Wong and Abomination, specifically Wong. Holy crap! Didn't think he'd actually have some sort of a presence in this movie more than just a quick cameo. It was great. It was great. So good. I mean, he added a little bit more life to the movie, and I mean, Wong's a great character, and I was okay with that 100%. Yeah, I mean, God, after you see him fight Abomination and take Abomination out, you're like, wow, Wong's a badass, as if we didn't know that already. Then finding out that he's been training Abomination this entire time blew my fucking mind. Didn't see that coming. (laughs) I remember turning to him being like, what does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, interesting. I did not expect that at all, and it was definitely a shocker. Yeah, I thought maybe, uh, you know, in China they were, like, Abomination after the blip got out and has been, like, being held in China somewhere. But no, Wong just, like, takes him out of his cell and, like, trains him a bit and says, you gotta get better, brings him back to the cell. It's so weird, but I I love it. And then, you know, later in the movie when Wong pops back up at the end. Dude. Like I said, you just, if you know, you, just, you know. You just tie it back in. I mean, it's the last thing on my list that I wanted to talk about. But let's talk about this end credit scene. Because, you know, Wong comes back and he's like, Shang-Chi, Katie, come with me. We're going to the Sanctum. And then suddenly, he's like, I, I've never seen these rings before. Where are they from? They're not in the Sanctum books. Nothing. There's been no tales about this. How long have you had them? Oh, thousands of years. Bruce Banner, do you know anything about this? I lost my shit. Because, you know, we're sitting there. And it pans over to Bruce Banner. And I'm like, oh, it's Bruce. Oh, it's Bruce. <laughs> like Human. The fucking double take that happened in my mind. Like, like I froze for a second. I'm like, okay, Bruce and Captain Marvel. Wait, Bruce. Why is Bruce here? It's not Hulk. It's Bruce. Like, what does it mean? 
What does I it don't, mean? I don't know what it means. I don't know what any of this means, and I love it. Oh, I love it. I mean, it sets up all these like questions I have, like, what the fuck? Now we're going to get answers soon. It's just, you know, keeping me engaged in the MCU, making me want more, and, you know, great end credit. I think it might be one of the best end credits we've gotten in a while. Yeah. Because I don't think we're getting any of these questions answered soon, like no. within the next movie or two. I think this is going to be over the next couple of years. Like, I mean, we don't know when Shang-Chi and Kate are popping up again. Like, we, we don't know. Yeah, it could be a minute. It could but, be a um, minute. You know, they set up like, yeah, well, welcome to the Avengers, which that was cool. That was really cool. When Bruce said that, it was just like, oh my god. Uh, but that, and then Captain Marvel having to step away and be like, you get, you guys can figure this out. And also, her hair is not short anymore. Mm -hmm. It's long. I think we all know what it sets up, right? Well, it, obviously it sets up the Marvels, but how long has it been since Endgame? I mean, right. it's got to be at least... <laughs> I'd like to think like eight months, ten right. months. I don't know. I don't know how long women hair, you know, how long that takes to grow. I mean, you know, it takes yeah, a while. It's probably, it's probably like eight months, if anything. Yeah. Because hair know. grows pretty fast. But we know it's been a while. It's been a pretty long time. And there's a lot, you know, we have to fill in. Like, why is Hulk not Hulk anymore? Like, to me, uh, my theory going on is maybe Natasha's death broke him. And split Professor Hulk back into two again, so we can actually get some normal Hulk action, and maybe see the true Hulk again. So, you know, kind of retcon Professor Hulk just a little bit. I love Professor Hulk, but I would also mm -hmm. like to see normal Hulk. You know, I, I need to see more normal Hulk, and that's gonna set up She Hulk. So, maybe it has to do with She Hulk. Maybe he has to turn back maybe. in the banner to like save his cousin or something because I, I think in the comics she has some like she gets in an accident and he, she he's like the only person that like can give blood to her or something i don't i don't know but something something, some, something like that so it makes sense that he would have to turn back into bruce to do that maybe it just messes him up who knows i guess we'll find out soon because that's not going to be far away I, I love everything about this movie. I'm glad it gives us more questions to theorize about because I think that's my favorite thing. I love I love speculating about this stuff. Like but also we got a solid story with solid characters, solid action, really good comedy. I don't know what else to say. I love this movie. I think it's one of the better origin stories. I think it's one of the better ones in the MCU. I mean, yep. It's it's really good. Really good. Okay. What would you rate this movie out of 10? That's tough. That's really tough because I want to see it again because we haven't seen it again since it yeah. came out uh, or since we saw it. I want to say right now like a 7.8, 7.9, maybe 8. Okay. See, I was actually just asked this question so I know what my rating is. Uh, mm. I would say probably like 8.5 to a 9. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. If you have, hopefully you enjoyed. And yeah. Yeah, guys. Uh, definitely, if you haven't seen it yet, why'd you watch this? Why, why would you let yourself be spoiled to all this goodness of Marvel? You definitely check it out if you haven't already. Or if you saw it, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Let us know. Obviously, Subscribe to the channel if you're not already and hit that like button to tell us that you enjoyed this content and that you would like to see more because uh, I know we would love to talk more about movies and such. We'll be back in another video to talk about more nerdy shit and we will see you guys later. Bye.